cold, raining out. I think it's uh, about 42 degrees Fahrenheit. And like, look at the mess I got out here. Oh my word. Because I'm re redoing my little shop outside. I got an outdoor shop where I cut all my wood, work with my wood. And I'm putting in a urinal here in the corner, tied directly into the weeping bed system here. I'm just waiting for the flange which came, which came in today to find out how far from, I'm going to build a, a wall in here. Might tile it too. I got some tile here and I've got uh, some cement board over there against the wall. And uh, I'm going to put a water tank up here with the pipe running down. And then I'm going to run a, a line off the eave trough so every time it rains, It'll fill the tank up, I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping. It doesn't need much water. I think when you flush one of these things, it probably doesn't even use a liter of water. Maybe half a liter. So that's what I'm working on there. <clears throat> it snowed last night. It's May 2nd today. And uh, I, thought I'll, I thought I'd put this fender on and then I realized I'm missing the two bolts for here and I went on to uh, I want to see what kind of bolts they were or how I had this on because I've had it off for I don't know a year or so now maybe two and so I always go to bikebandit.com and uh, bikebandit.com bikebandit.com is uh, internet website out of California. I've been using them for years and years. They've probably been around for at least 20 years. And uh, they um, have every bike there is, like mostly Harley stuff, stuff like that, but they have a Suzuki, Yamaha, Honda, right back to the 70s, I believe. And uh, you can type in your bike and uh, it'll have the, they've converted all the microfish to uh, you know format for the computer. So you can look up your parts. and. A lot of times I, I look on there and I don't order parts. I just look on there to see what the exact bolt size was. Like for this fender, I was going to go on there and see if, what are the uh, 6 mil by 35 or 40 mil. I don't know. And it'll tell you. So that way you can put the exact right bolt back in there. So I went there today to look on. I couldn't find it. I bike band, I, it's one of my favorites. So I click on it and it comes up, no website, no website. I go, what the hell? So then I Googled it. <laughs> I Googled it. And it said... Uh, it closed April 22nd a year ago, even though I used it a few months ago, like the website, just to look up parts. It said the CEO of the company uh, skipped out with $646,000 of their uh, liquid assets, their cash, and uh, took off with the money. I don't, and it didn't say he was ever caught. <laughs> they haven't found him yet. <laughs> so uh, uh, that was kind of weird to see that. Try not to get the light in there. There's my old hockey stick. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was kind of weird. They they shut that company down. I used to have a uh, a sticker for them. It, it, it's I didn't see it on that, but I, there was something else I used to have all my stickers on. And I might have it around here somewhere, but yeah, they're they're done. They're out of business. So there's another one on there. I just typed in Yamaha parts diagrams, and there's another website there. Um, uh, Godzilla is it? I think it's Godzilla. So, anyways, here's what I found. It doesn't take bolts. And then I started to remember, oh, I remember there was a plate. So I just found this plate. I cleaned it. I cleaned it all up like a year ago. And uh, it was all rusty and everything. And I just finished fine sanding it. And I put the first coat of primer on it. And so, yeah, it's just this plate that goes inside the fender kind of supports a little better and then slides up through and then you put a acorn on the top of each of these here like with a washer and yeah looking in my garage here floor look at all this this wood I got this wasn't even half of the wood that was there uh, I got it for a hundred bucks at this farm and uh, I, I just need some of these big barn boards and some of these barn boards here and I'm they're they're all wet in the rain and muddy I'm gonna probably have to wash them off and uh to finish building my shelves in the basement. 
uh, around the TV. I got the TV mounted to the wall. And I'm going to build all these shelves because when I bought this house, there was like uh, 300 VHS videos, like brand new in boxes. And uh, I'm going to mount them. I'm going to build a barn board shelving for them. So they're exactly the right height and put little supports in every so, so I can stick them all in alphabetical order or, you know, or sci-fi or documentaries, whatever they all are. There's a lot of good movies in there. And then I'm going to put the, uh, uh, my receiver on there and the VHS player, DVD player, and the firebox. Because when I, when I built that wall in the basement, I, I, I designed all the wiring to go into the wall so you don't see any wires behind the TV hanging down below the TV. And then I, I made a section to the right where you can just plug directly into it, into the wall. I'll show you when I build it, but anyways. See, I can let this all dry out. It's a little bit moldy. Some of the boards are, boards are moldy, so. Uh, this is more than enough, and, and this isn't even half of what was there. I, I, had to, I had to leave the other half. The other half was all like big beams like this, but I, I have no need for them, and I, uh, my truck was loaded. There was over This is over 1,000 pounds right here. And if you ever try to buy barn board, it's usually anywhere from $3 to $5 per board foot. So I, think, I believe that's a 12-inch board, and that board's 12 feet, so that's uh, 60 bucks. that board. Right? No, is that right? Uh, if it's 12 feet so for every two feet is uh 10 bucks yeah 60 bucks that board right there that board's even longer it's 14 feet um yeah so those those two boards pay for the whole pile right there <laughs> and very rare to find a 12 inch one by 12 100 years old anyways i haven't put the carbs on this yet I'm just uh, back to, uh, I just haven't got my mind wrapped around that. Because what I got to do, I got I take all these brackets off. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. And uh, you got to take the, the clamps all off here. I got this loosened up pushback. Um, I'm probably going to try, try to do it with these clamps on. Just warm them up a little bit. Slide the carbs on. And then try to wiggle this back on. And then refeed the clamps on. If you leave the clamps on here, You'll distort. You'll they'll bend them all the hell trying to get it on. So it's it's it's, it's a it's a pain to do. So that's why I haven't done it. <laughs> so and plus it's fucking snowing out last night. It's still damn cold. May second, unbelievable. Um, yeah, there's the fender. It's all painted up. It's beautiful. That's ready to go. So I'm gonna work on that. Let's put that there so that doesn't over and get scratched it's typically what i do i get stuff painted and then i get it marked or scratched okay yeah my fa my uh, tanks not done yet they, they keep messaging me that done this week done next week so i don't know hopefully this week it's done okay that's it for now <laughs> Bye. Yeah. nicer day today this is like 55 degrees out it feels colder than that though unless you're in the sun got the doors open today let my wood dry a little better all the barn board and I'm just gonna finish putting on the fender this is a 40 year old piece of rubber so I heated it up with my heat gun 
right there and then twisted it in there i got that in this piece is all painted primer painted two coats two coats and they're ready to stick her back together to get your fingers in there. Nice if the wheel was off, maybe I have to pull the wheel off. Yeah, master, it's gonna fall out. I'm gonna take the wheel off. It'd just be easier. Easier to hold this plate up. under loose I got the back end of the bike strapped down so it should stay there or oh, I should stick a block under under the motor here Probably good enough, but I'm taking this tire off and cleaning it up. has to locate in these bosses in here. Oh, I forgot this going backwards. <laughs> Lock washer, acorn nut. Chrome washer, lock washer, acorn nut. Now there's 
one more bolt that goes on either side of here. That's where the brake, the brake hose locks into there. Oh, now I still gotta clean all this up. So I'm gonna leave that for now. I could tighten those up, I think they'd be all right. Just in case I forget. Gonna look like a new bike. Hmm. I still gotta clean out this uh, brake caliper here. This one's all done. I gotta do that one. I'm gonna worry about the fork oil in the very end. I'm gonna redrain it, refill it up. Not sure why that leaked out. I just can't see it leaking out of that O-ring. It, it seemed to be leaking from here after sitting for so long. I, I don't get it. Maybe because there's you know, the brake hoses aren't on. No hose on here. Well, we had a warm day today. I think it was 14 degrees Celsius. What's that, 60? I don't think you can see this at night time. I think it's nine o'clock, 9.30. Almost dark. I've been working back here <laughs> in my back shop area and I finally got the urinal installed and I got a little bit more bracing to do there and then I'm going to put cement board around the bottom tile lot and uh, I got a board up this side because I'm going to pile all the firewood up that side there but that's what I did today and I thought I'd end the, I'd end the video on this point. <laughs> Now when I'm drinking beer, I got a place to piss. Good night. See you next video.